and welcome back to our fourth and final video tutorial in our mini series focusing on lightning where we'll be looking at adding said lightning to the text we've already created in the previous video. So we've added our burned out text to the image already. Now let's go ahead and create some more lightning bolts like the one in the image to really electrify the type. So let's start by reducing the size of the effects panel by double clicking the panel header like so and if that doesn't open up your layers panel then go ahead and just drag the layers panel up or down or whatever you've got to do to make it larger. Now we're going to go ahead and duplicate the lightning layer itself by coming over to the layers panel and clicking on it to start with. Now I'm going to press Control J to duplicate the layer and then I'll drag it all the way to the top of the stack like so. Now we no longer need the mask attached to it so I'll drag the mask down to the trash can icon and when I'm asked if I want to apply the mask before removing it I'll just simply click delete. Next I'll come over to the top of the layers panel and make sure the move tool is active and when it is I'll be able to drag the active layer over like this just so we can see what's going on. Now if I drag it down onto the text you can probably start to see where we're going to form our final effect from. So go ahead and drag it around by holding your cursor just outside of the transformation box and lay it onto the text just like so, any way you like. Once you're happy, hit the enter key or the return key and then I want you to come over to the layers panel once again and press the padlock icon at the bottom here to lock the layer from any further accidental modifications. Once that's done, hit Ctrl or Command J again to duplicate the layer and again move it into position over the text, turn it around a little bit like so, somewhere like this and when we're happy we can hit the Enter or Return key again and then come back over and lock the layer so that we can't change it. Now we just need to repeat that process as many times as you feel necessary so once again I'll hit Command or Ctrl J to duplicate and I'll drag that over here like so and then we'll rotate that a little and when we're happy that we've got it in the right position or something that looks good anyway I'll press the enter key here on the PC the return key on the Mac and then once again I'll go ahead and lock that layer I'm going to add a couple more bolts for good measure so control J and I'll have him over here somewhere I'm just trying to distribute these as evenly as I can and then I'll press the enter key to confirm that change and then I'll lock that into position. Once again control J and then I'll move that over here like so. That looks good. Then I'll press the enter key when I'm ready to confirm the change and then I'll lock the layer. And I think I'll add one more just for good measure. So control J, move it to this area I'd say somewhere where we just need a little bit more lightning going on. That looks pretty good then I'll hit the enter key and I'll lock the layer. Perfect. The next thing we want to do is confine the lightning to inside the letters. A task that would be very simple as it turns out in the full version of Photoshop but not quite so easy and efficient as we go in the elements version of the software which we're working in here. In the full version of Photoshop we could group the two text layers and then we could group all these lightning layers overlaying the text and then we could clip the lightning group inside the text group and we get the effect that we want. If that doesn't make sense don't worry we're gonna be looking at this in a little bit more detail over the next couple of moments. Here in Elements we're going to have to use a different route anyway so let's make a start. The first thing to do is select the top lightning layer in the layers panel and then come down and shift click the last one and that should select them all. Now right click and choose the option to merge the layers and that unfortunately leaves us with this mess because the merge doesn't take place with the screen blend mode active as sad as that is. There is a simple solution though you'll be pleased to know and that's that we can just go right ahead and add that blend mode back to the layer so make sure the correct layer is active and change the blend mode from normal to screen. 
Next we need to clip the lightning into the text, but it's tough to do when there are two separate text layers and they both contain different pixel opacities. Well, if the lightning can't go to the text layer, then the text layer will have to come to the lightning. So find the original text layer in your composition and then I'd like us to control or command click it. That will select the outline and present it to us as a selection. Now come up and click on the lightning layer to activate it. Then come down to the mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel and give it a click. We now have created a mask of the letters. There's one more thing I'd like to do before we call it a day and that's to give the lightning over the text a blue tint just for effect really, just for added effect. So make sure the lightning layer is selected and then come down and press the adjustment layer icon and choose the hue saturation adjustment layer just like so. Now go ahead and press the clip button at the bottom left of the panel so that we can restrict these adjustments to the layer immediately below and then let's turn the colorize checkbox on and then drag the hue slider around until we come up with a befitting blue color. You can choose any color you like if you're feeling creative but this blue that you're seeing right here in front of you on screen will do me just fine. And there we go, I'll tab away the panel so that we can see the final effect. We've come a long way if you can remember what the image looked like when we first started out. We have completely transformed it into a storm at least twice as big as the original and all of these clouds in the foreground and the text it's all looking very nice. Well folks I really appreciate you joining me for the fifth anniversary of our very first tutorial being uploaded to YouTube. It's quite a milestone for me and I really hope to see you all back at the free Photoshop website sometime in the future. Once again thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>